Thank you for joining us again this week at the House of Destiny Network. It's great to have all of you with us wherever you are in the world. I've been hearing back from so many of you and I, I just, I love to hear from you. Um, like I've been saying and I keep saying, I love the experience of us being able to communicate back and forth and the unity and the agreement that happens in that. And, um, you know, I just, I, I have to get, give props to our worship team again and uh, to everything we're doing here at the House of Destiny Network. Um, I feel so strongly that we're moving in the right direction and we're going um, in the direction that God showed to my parents, to, especially to my father. And um, no, no matter that my father is now with my father in heaven, our father in heaven, the beautiful thing is that what God was doing wasn't about Kim Clement. This is God's plan for his people. Kim Clement was a servant who fulfilled his destiny and joined the cloud of witnesses, but we are left behind. And the responsibility that I feel very heavily on myself, and I know my mother and, and everybody else here at the House of Destiny, we feel very strongly and passionately. I know Charlie Jordan, you do too, on, on the continuation of what God was doing through my father. And it wasn't just through him. And everything that has culminated to the, uh, the moment in time that we're at is exactly where we're meant to be. And what are we gonna learn from it? And what are we gonna do with it? And what is our responsibility as Christians? And so I've been speaking about fear and I wanted to kind of keep talking about that. Um, I don't know if I, I'm going to veer off or not today, how much I will. We'll see what happens. But I am talking about the truth about fear because I feel like fear is a, is a, very, um, a very strong inhibitor of, of us reaching certain, certain things in our life that are so crucial for us to get to. And if, if the only thing hindering us is fear, then that's the thing we need to overcome. And I do sense that fear. And I did promise you last week that I would talk to you a little bit more about my personal experiences with fear. And I did tell you a story about when I was a child being afraid. You know, fear was something that I've struggled with my whole life. Um, I had anxiety problems, and this is a hereditary thing. We have it in our family. We have anxiety. My dad certainly didn't, but it, it does run in our family, and it, it was a, a, an issue for me and, and, and difficult for me. When my father fell ill and I first had to stand up and speak um, here at the House of Destiny, I, I struggled. Um, many of you who were watching back then, uh, and for those of you who don't know, I, I, would just, I was just getting up on the stage and, and, and speaking, and I had no experience. I still don't have much experience. And, and like I've been sharing with you on, when I'm going live on Facebook and YouTube, I'm learning and you're actually watching me learn how does God want me to speak and what does he want me to do right now? And that's where I am in my own life. And I really feel like that the answer to to the division and the discord and the fighting and all of this mess in the world around us is that we, we defy that by doing the opposite. And so we are not going to be fearful. You know, Christ told us that we would, we would suffer for, in his name. That as a Christian is something that we understand and accept, but it doesn't mean he's not going to bless us. It doesn't mean he's not going to protect us. And it doesn't mean he's not going to guide us. And that is where uh, the prophetic comes in. Now, you know, we, we had for how many years, 30 or more years with my dad, uh, those of you who followed this ministry, with my dad, you had a prophet coming and prophesying and you knew he was accurate, he had the right heart, he, 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 he was coming from uh, the right place and, and always staying true to the Word of God. And that is very, very important as Christians is that we understand the, the depth of this, which by the way, this is my beautiful new Bible. It's covered in roses and everybody knows how much I love roses and I got this beautiful Bible and so I'm going to actually read you a verse from it today but I'm very excited about my new Bible. But let me tell you, this is the place 
that we come from and we, we, don't, we don't stray from here because this is our guide. This is not just an historical book that we can refer to, although history is there. This is a guide not about what is, but how to be. How do we handle things? How do we deal with things? And all of the answers are there. And so um, today, I, you know, I looked at, I'm looking at the world around me and I'm thinking about, okay, this is what I'm seeing. Like I said, division and arguments and opinions and within the church is what grieves me the most. But we have to remember what it is to be a Christian. And I, you know, I was reading Romans 12 verse 2, so I'm going to read it to you from my new Bible. Um, and Romans 12 verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's the obvious there, okay? We know that we need to study the Word. We need to know the Word of God and understand it. But we also, it's not just about memorizing it and knowing Bible verses. It's not just about a, a, a surface moral guide. It's not an, an allegorical book um, that, you know, that tells moral stories that help us through. It's not just that. There are mysteries in this. There is so much in this that it is astounding because it is the unraveling of the story of redemption. And this is not just a book. Remember the never ending story? It's kind of a little bit that way, even though I'm not ascribing it to the never ending story. But it is a continuously unfolding story in here that is applicable with every generation and there's new revelation in here with every generation and there are new ways of dealing with the different things that happen you know right now we have an advance in technology that is so rapid and so fast moving and the, the bible tells us knowledge will go to and fro across the earth so it's quite astounding um, but let me get to this because I'm going to forget. Okay, so in the King James Version, that's what it says. Do not be conformed to this world. So I thought, okay, what does conform mean? Conform is to act in accordance or harmony or comply. To act in accord with the prevailing standards, attitudes, practices, etc. of a society or a group. To be or become similar in form. Uh, nature or character okay when I looked at that definition to act was the word that stood out to me over and over and over again to act like something to act that fits in to act so are we going to act and and again I'm not talking about what you wear what you watch uh, those are, are, you know, whether or not you think something is a sin or is going to be harmful to you is actually very personal. And so you have to then utilize those in authority over you and your own perception and your own discernment in how you are going to behave in the world. Um, uh, so in, in no way am I talking about sin on a surface level. I'm talking about something that's going on in the mind again. And so what I see and bear with me as I try to get, get this thought out to you, because a lot of this is coming to me right now as, as I'm sitting here, or I'm, as I'm standing here talking to you, is, okay, so we act like what is acceptable. So what you see happening uh, politically um, and in all areas of life that is so disruptive, which is causing us to feel fearful and, un uh, and, and like unsure and, and there's definitely an attack on Christians. That's without question. Uh, there's an attack on Christians. It's an attack on Jews, uh, specifically the, the state of Israel, this whole argument over that. Uh, we at the House of Destiny stand with Israel. We always will. I will always say that. But 
How do we deal with it? That's what I'm getting at. As Christians, how are we going to deal with it? If you're on a social media site, or if you're in um, a, a university setting, or if you're at a lecture, or if you're at a dinner, and uh, the way in which people are acting, it's this constant battle of needing to be right, a very tribal and primitive behavior of, I'm on this team, you're on that team. So as Christians, how do we defy that behavior? Well, we don't, as it says in Romans 12, verse 2, conform to this world. So if we're seeing this behavior going on that is so destructive to our, to our world, because it's not just in the United States of America, this is happening everywhere. If we act like that, because we're conforming to it, we have to defy that. How do we do that? It says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind, what does that mean? Really, what does that mean? And that's the question I asked myself. So I looked up the definition of transform. To change in form, appearance, or structure, metamorphosis. To change in condition, nature, or character. To change into another sub substance, transmute. Okay? So what's the difference there between conform and transform? Conform is to act, to act, to act. You're pretending. You as a Christian are transformed when you are washed in the blood and accept Christ as your savior. You are transformed, not just in your soul and accepting him into your heart and getting into heaven. It's much more than that. There's a transforming of your mind, which is a transforming of the way in which you see the world, which is a transforming of how you deal with the world. So when you're in the situation, and this goes back to how are we going to show, visually show what it is to be a Christian? Because talking about it and throwing opinions back and forth is not working, and it's not working on this generation. What is going to work is to show because this is a generation that watches YouTube videos on their phone. We're looking at a phone all the time. We're looking. Everything is so visual that as Christians, it's our responsibility to now show what it is to be a Christian. And you may say, well, Donna, how do I do that? Well, you're going to have to figure that out because it's your unique life. So as you go into each unique situation, you pray, you can whisper a prayer to, your, to God, you do it anyway. God, how do I handle this situation? I'm in this discussion with this person who is so, let's say it's politics, because that's a, that's a given right now. Okay, they're so set in what their political views are. And how do I handle the situation? They don't like that I'm a Christian. They start throwing uh, one-liners at me and it's, I feel attacked or, or I'm being silenced. How do I handle this? And God is going to show you. That's the beauty of the prophetic. That's the voice inside of you. That's the still small voice that says, do this, handle it this way, keep silent, or behave this way because then could you stand in front of a most unlikely candidate, of a most unlikely person, someone who thinks the complete opposite of you, can you stand in front of them and show them Christ in you? And that I think is, I'm figuring it out and every week you're gonna go further with me and you're, you're gonna see what what I'm seeing and trying to figure out how to convey because it's so much bigger than me and that's why I need you and so um, I did find um, that there's an Aramaic Bible in plain English which I never knew about and I thought it was so interesting and Romans 12 verse 2 in there says do not imitate this world but be transformed by the renovation of your mind and that was an interesting translation to me. So I looked up renovate, to restore to good condition, to make new as if new again, 
to reinvigorate, refresh, revive. And when I, there's just something that just, just sparks up in my spirit when I, when I thought about that because, you know, we, we're conditioned from birth and it's at, at no fault of our parents or maybe it is and, uh, you know, there's set ways of thinking and set ways, things that make us comfortable and we're never supposed to be too comfortable. That's not what this life is about. This life is not about being comfortable and being, feeling safe. We're overcomers, we're warriors, we, we're conquering mountains. That's what's happening. And we cannot be complacent and sit back and be quiet and allow what's going on. The answer is not violence. The answer is not to attack. The answer is not to have endless, mindless, verbal arguments where everyone's throwing their opinions back and forth because it's solving nothing. The answer is not to separate ourselves into bubbles and be like, I'm on this team and I'm on that team and we're not even talking to each other. That's not the answer either. There is a way and his name is Jesus Christ. I, I, you know, on my way here today, I actually, I wept because I was listening to some, you know, I cannot hear the story of Abraham and Isaac without weeping. If I hear the story of Abraham when he took his son to sack his only son that he waited a hundred years for, that was promised to him and he, God asked him to give, give up that son, that one thing that he wanted so badly. God asked him to give it up and he did it. He took him up and, and right before he was about to, to sacrifice his own son, the angel stopped him and said, and God said to him, no, I will provide the lamb. And 2000 years ago he did on a mountain called Calvary, on another mountain, on another hill. And he did not send an angel to stop what was going to happen. And, ooh, even now I don't want to cry. But that is, is where the core of it all is. Because we will spend, until we can see who Jesus really was. And until we can show the world who Jesus really was, our sons and our daughters will continue to die as we go after all the things that we don't need that don't matter. Because it was on Calvary that God gave us his son. Whew, I won't cry, I won't cry again. You guys know I'm a crier, but that is a beautiful thing and there was a promise made to Abraham and so I will not uh, stand for anybody speaking ill of the Jews and uh, they are God's, they are the apple of God's eye and they, you know, so many people say, oh, well, they, they took, they, they crucified Jesus. No, a religious spirit crucified Jesus. The Jews gave us Jesus. He was a Jew. His story is a story of redemption, and so is everything in the Bible, in this beautiful book. It's a story of redemption. And so, sorry for getting emotional, but it's, I'm very passionate about that, and uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, uh, I will uh, be praying for all of you. I'll be seeing you on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. I'm gonna go YouTube Live. So be looking for me at the Kim Clement YouTube channel because I'm going to go YouTube live and I might do Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And so um, I ask you to join me and also let me know what you think. I love hearing from you. I'm hearing from so much, uh, so many more of you. Um, email me at codebreakers at houseofdestiny.org. It's in my phone. Here's my phone. You see, it's got my little rose on it there too. And you can email me there and just share with me. Uh, I can't always answer right away. I get a lot of emails, but I am reading every single one of them. And when you ask for prayer, I'm praying over them. I'm not a great orator, as my father used to say of himself. My dad used to say he's not a great, he actually was a great orator. I'm not. I'm not very good at uh, fancy wordy prayers, but my heart is for you. And uh, my heart is for 
for this quest of truth in a world so full of lies. And so my prayer for you is that you can see what I can see, that we see together, and in, in our agreement, God is in the midst of us. Um, and so with that, I say amen, and I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching the House of Destiny's YouTube channel. Please subscribe to get all of our latest content. This video was brought to you by all of our generous supporters. If you'd like to give, click the link in the description. We have new episodes every week, so stay tuned. And remember, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now.